should tell you my story. After I gave my heart to Christ, many years, I served every principle I knew. I applied. Nothing was working. I was applying principles. I was working hard. At least one must happen. But there was a covering cast over the family. Nobody could break it. There were three major patterns in my family. The first pattern is death. In the month of March, somebody will die. After two years, another March comes, somebody will die. And in five years, six people died. That was when I discovered there was a pattern. Meanwhile, my sisters are beautiful. I can tell you that one for free. Elegant ladies, all of them enter 30. Nobody came. So the pattern was either barrenness, uh, lack of settlement, or death. And then the third pattern is chronic, chronic lack and poverty. Chronic one. And there's no scripture you quote that breaks it. There's no fasting that breaks it. And then I was wondering, what is going on? And so, there was a year I decided to go on 21 days fast every month. And so from January, I do 21 days fast. Six days, I will rest. Enter February, I start 21 days fast. Something must happen. And so, the sixth month, while I was fasting, I was walking in my room praying. I kept pacing the floor and suddenly I had, I, had, I had messengers. Some guardians from the demonic realm showed up because somebody was beginning to trouble the balance of the ecosystem. And so they came and I looked around. I was walking. I was not lying down. If I was lying down, I would have said it was a dream. I was walking and I turned and I saw two creatures standing. One of them was like in the similitude of a man, but a man that was exhumed from the grave. So I could look through the skin, termites had eaten it up. I could see the bones. And then the other one stood with many horns, about 10 horns. And while I was yet contemplating, what is the meaning of this? The wall of my room vanished. And I discovered, even though my house was in Makodi, suddenly my house appeared in Utupa. Ah, that was when I discovered the physical location is a mirage. The real location is in the spirit. I ran to Makodi, rented the house. I was living there. But the ground in the spirit was still the ancient ground of Utupa. While I stood and was looking, the voice of the Lord began to speak to me. And he said, these are the rulers over your bloodline. And the gate they have into the souls of men is fourfold. He said, number one is lying. Because there is a grace you, you talk, you can manage situation quickly. No matter what happens, under pressure, back, 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 you coordinate things with all. He said that same power on the tongue, there's a corruption on it, lying. So if you keep in line, if you like, give all the seed. The greatest evangelist will teach you on how to sow. You will sow all the seed and become poor. Because these creatures will insist that wealth, power, and influence will never rest. They say number two is pride. If you, because my people are quite poor. <laughs> but they act as if they are gods. Nobody is bigger than them because they are intelligent. They are highly intelligent. Those days my dad used to be, he never came second in the class. If you come second, my dad will look at you and say, it's a pity. In fact, even if you come first, my dad will go and start looking at the subjects. I say, this is not a poor result. This is not a result. You came first. Your average is 69. That means if there was an intelligent student in that class, this is not first. <laughs> I'm telling you what we went through. Because while he was studying, he studied in the veterinary line. And those days from Samaru, he came first in the whole of Middle Belt. So they show pride in their knowledge. And it flows, it flows in the bloodline. Up to today, I'm still fighting pride. Because sometimes we come like this. God, you know, you're about to break your insurance system. 
I will now go back. So humility now is a, is a preserver. You want to show yourself, you will now remember that this is a key. You want to open the gate and they will call the white beast. They will soon summon them. They thought this drunkenness. Where I come from, they tap wine. Every compound has palm trees. And so the way they know whether you are a man is that when you are about four or five years old, they will give you a cup of palm wine. If you drink it and you don't drop the cup and you empty it, they will say, this is a man. Now a man has risen here. This is a man. And so we we'll take pride in drinking. Somebody can sit down and drink a keg and then he will stand up and walk home. They will look at you and say, oh, babana. That means thunder. <laughs> this one is thunder. And then you will walk like a, a cherub from alcohol. <laughs> thunder. And, and then if you are, if you are offended, they, sorry, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. You will now pride with. And then finally, it's immorality. And the spirit will stand. If you like, call yourself a bishop, you will go nowhere. And they told me, in order to secure the heritage of God on your life, lock these gates. If you lock these gates, you will prosper. That was when I understood how these guys work. Now, if you study the book of Ephesians, after the principalities come and secure the borders of your soul, he said, the powers will come. The powers. Look at what the Bible calls the powers. I'm trying to deliver somebody. Because you have been doing giving, it shall be given unto you. You will do it for 30 years. If these things are at work, they are powers that keep men bound. These powers are strong enough to frustrate the principles you are applying. If you don't subdue these powers, and everyone sitting here, you know the powers of your bloodline. They control the souls of your family. This is why, even though you are in Christ, Christ can't prosper you. Because the spirit realm is a legalistic realm. The powers are called exousia. But this kind of exousia, amazingly, the way it was used in this scripture is called the authority over choice. And so when the principalities win you, the powers come to make that thing you call a simple habit to become an addiction. And so you will discover that you want to now stop that thing you are doing. You can't. You try, you can't. Now, a power is involved. The, as you open your soul, when he entered your soul, what he was looking for is your choice. And so when he went, he hijacked your choice and locked it. And so you can no longer choose. He will choose for you. And so you find the guy. They told him, hi, hi. He took it both for one week. After two weeks, he's not trying to stop. He can't. Because a power has come to lock him. Now, the reason that power tempted him with that kind of temptation is because that is what they used to regulate that family. And now the door of covenant has been locked. So they are looking for another door to enter his soul, to alter his possibilities. And so when the power controls your choice, then the rulers of the darkness of this world come. The word used for rulers of darkness is cosmos kratos. And what it means is that king of the world that causes desolation, the blindness of sight. He said, the king that causes blindness of sight. You see why many people cannot see what will change them? Because these people are now manipulating your destiny. They've blinded your sight. What did the Bible say about blinding of sight? In 2 Corinthians 4, 3, it says, if our gospel be here, it is here to them that are lost. The lost are those who can no longer participate in the commonwealth of Israel. In 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 12 to verse 14, it said, we have not received the spirit that is of this world. It said, we have received of the spirit that is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us by God. But he now went to verse 14. He said, the carnal man. This is the carnal man. 
the man whose eyesight has been blinded in the spirit. He said, that man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. He has the spirit, but he cannot receive the things of the spirit of God. Neither can he know them because they are what? Spiritually discerned. But this is what the rulers of the darkness of this world come to do. They blind you. And so God is giving you a direction. He said, give the money you have to the widow. The, the prince will come and say, no, there's no wisdom in it. There are many widows in this town. Go and invest your money. Meanwhile, that is a divine direction. Because a kairos season opened over you. And what God is trying to do is to create a possibility for you to be launched. But the blindness is already there. So every time God gives you an instruction that should lead you to wealth, the spirit comes and counters it. And because the power has already locked your will, you will have no choice but to do what that spirit says. And so God will be trying to prosper you, but he cannot. And then finally, he spoke about the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. And the word used is the word pneumaticos penora. It means the spirit of desolation. That means what the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places do is that they are masters of creating poverty and desolation. But the way this sequence can be activated in your life, it begins from you opening your soul to the character and to the nature of those spirits. You see, when God is calling a people to repentance, when God is warning people to depart from iniquity, it's not just about serving him. Your prosperity is tied to it. When you open yourself up to dark princes, then they will also have the power to manipulate the outcomes of your life. The reason most of us apply principles and it doesn't work, we sow it doesn't work, is because there are far powers Powers that makes poor. Powers that makes desolate. Regulating our decision making processes. And so no matter what God attempts to do, we will counter God through our decision. And no matter how born again you are, God will not override your choice. And so what these spirits try to do is to find a way into your soul. So that by overriding your choices, no matter what God does to prosper you, he cannot do it. And this is why the second thing Christ will introduce you to for you to prosper is what we call consecrations. Because the job of consecration is to lock the gates of the soul. You will discover that this spirit opens different doors into your soul. Some of us is anger. Some of us is malice. Some of us is backbiting. We think we hate somebody. We go and gang up against them backbiting. After 10 years, you will discover that your life will end in penury and desolation. Because a spirit is using a tool against your prosperity. And so when God wants to help you and bring you into supernatural supply, the second thing God will do after the covenants is that he will introduce consecrations into your life. And the first consecration that will be introduced into your life is called prayer. You cannot keep any other consecration except as you have first of all been taught the consecration of prayer. Because nothing impacts the soul like prayer. That's why he said, be anxious for nothing. He said, by all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. He said, while you are here praying, God is doing something around your soul. He said, the peace of God that surpasses knowledge will begin to garrison your heart. So, while you are praying, God is building the wall over your soul. That's why he said in Jude verse 20, he said, you dearly beloved. He said, building up yourself. Building is like an edifice. Your soul has been wrecked. The walls of your soul have collapsed. Demons have found their way in. He said, but what you need to do is that Jerusalem must be built again. And he said, the way you build it is by praying, praying in the Holy Ghost. He said, as you pray in the Holy Ghost, an edifice begins to rise in your soul. And so all of the gates that were porous, they begin to shut them out. Because prayer will lock the gate of poverty and prayer will open the gate of prosperity. Because when men pray, it's a gate business. That's why prayer men are called watchers. Because when you begin to do the business of prayer, you are coming to the gates. And the first thing you will do at the gates is that every porous part that the devil has taken advantage of will be shot. 
Did you read what Jesus said? He said, if you have an altar against your brother and you bring a sacrifice to the altar, leave it there. Because prayer does not begin except as the gates are locked. And so when a man begins to pray, God begins to walk on his soul. God begins to shape his soul. That's why you will discover that sometimes God is teaching you prayer and he just puts you at the altar. It looks like he dumps you there. Because he won't begin to bless you. The gates are open. He will leave you on the altar. You are praying. He's sealing the gates. He's sealing the gates. And then you discover that as your prayer becomes consistent, after a while, your tongue that is flippant becomes guarded. Some of the things you can say casually, you can't say them anymore. You want to say them, you will now discover that your tongue is connected to your heart. Your heart is beginning to secure a new kind of alignment with your tongue. You discover that as you are praying, your eyes, God begins to censor your eyes. He starts washing your eyes with eyes off. You will not know that prosperity is in view, but they are locking the gates. And when a fortress is built around the gate, then something else will happen. The chains that kept you behind bars, they will begin to fall on their own accord. The Bible said in Acts chapter 12, that when he pleased Herod, that he killed James, he saw that he pleased the people. He said he took Peter also. And he said he locked Peter behind closed doors in between 16 gatekeepers. And suddenly, he said prayer was made of the church for Peter. When prayer begins to happen, gates and foundations begin to shake. And he said suddenly, the angel of the Lord descended and he said the chains fell off. Even Peter didn't know what was happening. He thought it was a vision. He said, get up your loins, rise up quickly and follow me. He said, as Peter walked through the prisoners, they didn't see him. The keepers. He went to the first gate. He said, he opened on his own accord. And he said, he went to the gate that opens to the city. The iron gate. And he said, even that gate opened. When the gate to the city opens, then welcome to the realm of wealth. Because the wealth is in the city. But what the devil will do is that when they enter, they will lock you in your own soul. And so you can't come out. That's why the Bible said, we have escaped through our window. Because a gate has opened. A gate was locked and a gate was opened. But many times, when God wants to lock people's gates, they will not pay the price of consecration. And so they start praying and then distraction. The same distraction that was the in route for the devil begins to take them out of the altar. I share humorously with you most times. Somebody begins to pray. After 30 minutes, he walks into the kitchen. He picks the pot and closes it. He comes back. He goes and opens the window. He closes it. He carries his phone. He touches. You can't achieve anything. This prayer you are praying, you are not asking God for bread. It's a reconstruction going on. And so you will learn how to take, tarry on the altar. Sometimes the sweat that will come out of you will be like clots of blood. Because what is happening is that a reconstruction is taking place. And as you are drilling and pressing, drilling and pressing, the war of thrones will begin to take place. You will keep at it. Did you not read about Daniel? Because this same kind of thing was what happened in Daniel. Daniel chapter 10 verse 20. He said, if I depart from you, I will go to fight the prince of Persia. And he said, when I'm done with the prince of Persia, he said, the prince of Grecia will come. Your job is to remain on the altar until the work finishes. Because when a man begins to travel, the angels of your destiny are mobilized. Because the same way the princes came and mobilized demons to destroy your life, God will now mobilize angels that should minister for your advantage. But you can't leave the altar until the angels show up. And so Daniel said, for 20 and one days, I ate no pleasant bread. For 20 and one days, the man was on the altar until the errand came from heaven. And the moment that errand comes, you will discover that the door for prosperity will open to you. You don't lack talent. You don't lack opportunities. The problem is that you can't see the opportunities. Because there is a, plea, a prince blinding you. And that prince is blinding you because that immorality is still there. Because that immorality is what gives that prince authority. That lying is still there. That alcoholism is still there. If it is divine wealth you are looking for, gates need to close. And other gates need to open. And the way it happens is through consecration. When you pray for a while and God secures the gate, then God will begin to add other layers of consecration. 
when I began to drill on the altar, I had experiences. One day I was praying and I was on a 21 days fast. And suddenly, a prince walked out of the wall and came to sit on my chest. I tried to push, I couldn't. And then I said, Jesus, save me. And when light came and dematerialized the prince, for two weeks I was struggling with lust. That was when I knew that these guys are actually the regulators of the souls of men. But when you break through in prayer, then God begins to secure your, your destiny. And God begins to give you consecrations. I have many. Some of them are for seasons and some of them are for eternity. Those consecrations become the secrets of your wealth. Because those are the things that will keep your gates perpetually locked. I shared one of them with them yesterday. When I prayed and broke through in prayer, one of the things God told me to do, he said, look for young people and impact them. And the only place I could find young people was in schools. I started teaching, first of all, mathematics and physics. I taught mathematics and physics until even in the school, the princes came. And the proprietors came and said, I should follow the people and cheat in Wayek. Ah, the same consecration God gave me to save me, a trap was set inside. I rejected. I had to leave the school. I went to another school and I kept at it. The calamity of this school is that there are senior people there. It's a government school this time, so there are deputy directors, very senior people. They will come to school by 8.30. Some will come by 9. After all, they've not paid some of them salary for seven months. So when you come to school, somebody who comes by 8.30 will now write 7.10. Uh -uh. <laughs> How did 8.30 become 7.10? And then you will see 30 people, 710, 711, 712, 730. Meanwhile, it's almost 830. So when I showed up, I wanted to write time. And I came to school around 820. I wrote 820. The other teacher that stood looked at me like an alien. Because now that you have written 820, you have set up every other person that is coming later. I came the second day. I wrote 805. Ah! It became a war for a season. A point now came when you are coming to write. They'll say, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait first. Wait. Let's write our own time. They will now write that. Because every consecration, there will be a challenge. Those gates, they will be struggling to open them up. They will be trying to open them. And they will find. Meanwhile, if you come late, sometimes they deduct money from your salary. And I was coming from New GRA. I kept writing it. I kept writing it. Until a point came, I stepped up and mastered how to come earlier. And the gate was locked. After a while, that school where I was teaching, the revival began. During break time, I'll be talking to the students. The whole hall will be packed. And God is baptizing people in the Holy Ghost. I was still in that school teaching, earning 25,000. All of a sudden, I will be in the school. They will call me and say, they are calling from Ibadan. Come and be a blessing. Ah. I will be in that school teaching. They say they are calling from me, Lauren. Come and bless us. I was in that school teaching. Somebody invited me from South Africa. They paid for the flight. When I checked, my own ticket was 10,000 rand. It was more than six months salary that I was earning. I said they would have sent this money to me so that I would preach through Zoom. <laughs> a point came... I was earning 25,000 naira per month. I was still in the school. My salary moved to 300,000. The salary now doesn't come from the school alone. People will sit at home. God will tell them to give this man something. I was in the school. A point came, I became too busy. That even the principal will ask me, when will you be around? So I had to resign. And this time, when I resigned, it was liberty. Before... If you resign, the, the next three months, you will suffer because there will be no money. But the gates were locked. Suddenly, things began to happen on their own accord. And as the gate remained locked, the impact kept increasing. 
the impact kept increasing. The same thing you are doing, you are doing, but the honor level changes. The honor will begin to change. The honor begins to change. And then as I am being promoted, more consecrations were given. A point now came, God told me, when you preach for an elder, don't take honorarium. Meanwhile, the elders are the ones that can give you according to your current season. Now, you don't understand. That's a parable. <laughs> you know, when you enter your current season, you have to measure it from the upper boundary. You were doing something before you were receiving 50,000. You do the same thing. Now you receive 500,000. It means a new season has opened. They are now seeing you differently. Now, the people that were re relating with me based on my current season, God now told me not to take from them. And so I will come. I'm careful not to call anybody father. So I, in order not to rope myself, I started calling everybody elder, honoring them. When I want to preach, the person will now come up and say they've done this thing for 30 years. Some will say they've done it for 40 years. Ah, ah. Why are you telling me the years that you have done this thing? Now that I've heard the years, it becomes a body. Sometimes I will preach. These people will take me to their office to pray for them. But I know it's a sin. Because without every contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. I will now kneel down sorrowfully. They will pray for me. Now that they have prayed for me, I will not take the honorarium again. And so what God was teaching me was that, he said, I am trying to give you there are many years of stability. Some of them have been righteous for 30 years. Some of them have remained relevant for 30 years. Where you come from, people are cut off. Where you come from, people rise and fall. And so God will start giving you different consecrations for different seasons and for different purposes. All of that is part of God bringing you into abundance. There are some of you here, you, are, you need a wisdom to start a company. But in your lineage, nobody has ever started a company. And so when God wants to help you, after you have broken through in prayer, God may send you to go and honor somebody. And as you honor that person, it will become the basis by which you will meet the person that will help you start the company. That's when you will come back into wisdom for wealth creation. There are powers that pull men down. And the powers that pull men down, you cannot deny their existence. That's why you have so many Christians, but very few are making impact. The reason is because those powers are there. And the authority those powers have over your soul are the consecrations that they bring you into. Because lying is a consecration. Immorality is a consecration. Hatred is a consecration. Backbiting is a consecration. And when God wants to change your fortune, he will block those gates and open new gates. And the way God opens new gates is that he gives you new consecration. He begins with prayer so that you will ascend to hear from Zion. And when you now ascend to Zion, then God will start giving you secrets that nobody knows. Find out people making impact, they have secrets. Strange secrets that doesn't look like it's connected to wealth. But so long as they keep those things and those ordinances, God will keep pouring things in their direction. And so the second way to step into divine prosperity is by satisfying the demand of covenant. It's by satisfying the demand of consecration. And it's by satisfying the demand of patterns. Patterns are actually products of covenants and consecration. When your covenant and your consecration is satisfied, you will now begin to regulate your patterns. Suddenly, the debt will cease. Suddenly, the poverty will cease. Favor will now begin to come from Zion. And you are asking yourself, why is this thing happening now? It's happening now because you have closed one gate and you have opened another gate. There are many people that have terrible gates are open over their soul. And because those gates are open, the princes in darkness will continually manipulate their lives. If you don't satisfy this, the first one will not profit you. Because this one has the power to corrupt the first one. And if you are working with the Lord, and you come to that point where consecration demand begins to go higher, know that God is about to usher you into prosperity. Because those things you call consecrations are also alarm systems in the spirit 
that a season is beginning to call you. Those things may not matter to you, but when your season is near, consecrations, demands for consecrations begin to rise again. If you are a wise man in the spirit, you will know that that thing is a season calling you. A season is calling you because those things will be the things that will fortify your soul to be able to receive that which God is about to usher you into. Every one of us sitting here, and I mean everyone, can be prosperous. Prosperity is not for a few. The reason only few prosper is because only few attain the demand of prosperity. The Bible said, ask of God rain in the time of the latter rain. And he said they will cause bright clouds to appear. And he said there will be rain for every blade of grass. Every one of us here can prosper. And I mean everyone. Both the educated and uneducated. Both the male and the female. Both the young and the old. And when you read through scripture, you are going to find out that God prospered every kind of being. In fact, when the prophet Samuel was speaking and spoke to Hannah, and Hannah went to celebrate, Eli, I beg your pardon, there was something she said. He said, the Lord kill it. He said, the Lord make it alive. He said, he causes the beggar, he lifted the beggar from the dung hill to stand among princes and to inherit thrones. That means God has enough power to make a beggar suddenly become equal with rulers. That power is with God. But there are protocols. And the protocol for supernatural wealth are the consecration requirement that God puts on your soul. This is not God trying to be hard on you. This is God trying to lock soulish gates that demonic entities take advantage of to frustrate your life. If you know this, you will be able to resist temptation even to the point of blood. Because one moment of pleasure can translate to 10 years of backwardness. You may not be aware. Because when these spirits come to you, they come in your chiral season. The spirit knows that you have sown a lot of seed and your cloud is full of rain. The rain is about to fall. And that rain can fall as divine direction. That rain can fall as divine favor. And so what the spirit does is that it comes again with intensity of temptation. And then you find people weeping. Hey, I don't know what happened. It has happened again. God will forgive you. But what will happen is that you have reset your possibility. You will have to wait for another five years for an opportunity to come your way. Because these things are in cycles. And too many people lose their cycles. That's why their lives is an embodiment of frustration. It will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Because the reason God asked me to teach you this is most of you are already qualified for prosperity. You have the right certificate. You have the right gifting. You have the right talent. And you have been applying principles. They say give, it shall be given unto you. You have been giving. They say serve, you have been serving. Everything they taught about wealth creation, about prosperity, you've done it, but your life has not gone anywhere. Could it be because of that anger that every time God wants to visit you, you fall into a rage, and in that three days of rage, you miss your word? Could it be because of that immorality that every time your word is about to come, you fall, and that one week that you are in the state of slumber, before you repent and come back to peace, your word has passed. The Bible said, until the time that his word came. There is a time that the word for men come. The problem is that when we don't fortify our existence through consecration, when our word is about to come, the devil will tap that button again. And that period where you fall into the pit and rise, your word has passed. And you will not know why it looks as if God is biased. God is not biased. God does not favor some and hate others. He favors everyone equally. When you find a man making impact, it's because he has maximized the possibilities of the spirit that are allocated to him. Believers must learn this so that we will know that sin is not just about pleasure. Sin is a manipulation of demonic princes 
to eat your years, to eat your seasons, to eat everything that God has prepared for you. But I speak to somebody here tonight that the years that the canker worm has eaten, the years that the palma worm has eaten, the years that the caterpillar worms have eaten, they are restored to you now in the name of Jesus. Some of you, your life has been eaten up. When the devil is fighting you, take time and ask God what he's looking for. Because warfare is deeper than it appears. And that's why anytime you find yourself in a warfare, don't be quick to fight back. Go and guard your heart. The major warfare is in your heart. Because if you allow this place to open, you may win the physical battle, but you may lose the one here. And it will cost you many years. Some of us, the devil has eaten deep into our lives. But the Lord is speaking to you today because there is a possibility of restoration that he wants to activate. And so the word that brings your restoration, it comes to you now in the name of Jesus. You know, I taught you. I told you the help of God is threefold. The first dimension of the help of God is intervention. Intervention is God's strategy of stopping the assault, assault of the devil on your life. Restoration, on the other hand, is God trying to redeem the things the devil has stolen from you. And preservation is God keeping you where he has brought you to. I don't know which of these you need. And I don't know if you need the three of them. But I speak by all means. Receive the help of God tonight. If it's intervention you require, receive it now. If it is restoration you need, receive it now. If it is preservation you need, receive it now. In the name of Jesus. Some of you, what God is showing you now, are the patterns, the bloodline patterns. Probably you've never paid attention to it. Abraham loved fair women. Isaac loved fair women. Jacob loved fair women. Abraham deceived Abimelech. Isaac deceived Abimelech. And Jacob became a chief deceiver. Some of you, while I'm speaking, you left the message a long time ago and for the first time you began to study the patterns of your bloodline the patterns you discover that your family they are arrogant they are vicious they are self-centered they are immoral whichever pattern it is that the devil has used to rob your family i speak over you prophetically tonight receive the power to live above them Receive the grace to live above them. Receive the authority to subdue them. In the name of Jesus. You will not remain like this. There are heavy potentials that men carry. The Bible said, I saw an abomination under the sun. It said, beggars are riding on horses. White princes are trekking on barefoot. Everyone redeemed is redeemed a priest and a prince. He said he has washed you and made you a king and a priest. And so if you are trekking, it's an abomination in the spirit. And so I speak over your life. Every abominable circumstance in your life, they turn for your favor. I command a turn around in your life. In the name of Jesus. How can a first class student be trekking around the city looking for what to eat? How can a man with 20 years experience suddenly become stranded in life? How can a whole family, not one qualifies to get married or to get married properly? And how can you have a family of four? All of them are widows and widowers. 
there is a pattern and so i speak over your life this evening every demonic pattern that has reduced the quality of your life every demonic pattern that has altered the possibility of your family every demonic pattern that has truncated the essence of god in your lineage in the name of jesus i command them to go down now i put an end to the patterns now in the name of jesus there are some of you it is the day that you should be promoted that they place an embargo it will be going on where until you arrive and suddenly it will it must stop with you even when you try to to outsmart the pattern and you struggle to go a bit further they will still stop it before you start you decide to go back they will stop it before it gets to you because the program that was written for you is that never enter labor until you arrive there because before the gate is shut i alter every demonic program i change every demonic program written for you and your family in the name of jesus and we rewrite your destiny tonight let your path become the path of the just let it shine brighter and brighter unto the perfect day in the name of jesus i speak concerning your life everywhere death was written it is replaced with life everywhere poverty was written is replaced with prosperity everywhere frustration is written is replaced with joy in the name of jesus you enter certain families this one is a talented artist this one is a talented producer this one is a talented footballer it's as if it's a congregation of talents yet not one head is lifted because there are there are horns that have scattered jerusalem and judah but i come to you tonight as the carpenter and every horn that has scattered potentials every horn that has wasted destinies in the name of jesus we cut them off tonight we cut them off tonight step into your prosperity now he said upon mount zion there shall be deliverance he said there shall be holiness and the sons of jacob shall possess their possession you have come to mount zion the city of the living god and so in the name of the lord jesus receive your prosperity now receive your prosperity now there are certain other people that the devil raises men to pull them down it's not even spirits fighting them it's men the devil raised the Bible said to subvert a man in his course. He said, the Lord, I provide not. Every man the devil has risen to frustrate you and you have nothing against. I speak right now. Such wicked men are cut off. If they don't repent in seven days, they are cut off from the face of the earth. In the name of Jesus, every strong man in your life goes down now. And every altar speaking against your destiny we silence their voices now in the name of Jesus go forward and prosper they have written a law concerning some people that before they experience the slightest breakthrough they must be 40 years in some family they must be 50 years and they are not permitted to enjoy it for more than three years so the moment it looks as if it's becoming good, they die. Everything written concerning you to bring death in your prime. Everything written concerning you to cut you off in your prime. We reprogram that program. We recalibrate that program. In the name of Jesus. You will not just enjoy God's season over your life or a season. You will enjoy it until you leave this world and you will hand it over to your children because he said a man that served the lord he said his seed shall be mighty upon the earth he said the generation 
of the upright shall be blessed i decree over your life you don't just prosper but your generations are blessed and finally there are some of you you don't even know what it looks like to believe anymore because your faith severally the devil has bashed and so now even when god is moving it doesn't occur to you that you are one of them the bible said when the lord shall turn again the captivity of zion it said we shall be like them that dream dreams then will our mouth be filled with laughter in the name of jesus the kind of promotion the kind of prosperity that makes it look like a dream and fills the mouth of men with laughter receive it now receive it now listen do you know this kind of prosperity it's a prosperity that yourself know you don't qualify for that's why it's like a dream and so i i move you to a realm of prosperity that you don't qualify for i move you to the realm of influence that you don't qualify for i move you to a realm of abundance that you don't qualify for by the grace of god receive it now receive it now receive it now in the name of jesus <laughs>